What is new from Summit 1.12 to Summit 1.16? One of those new features was not heavily publicized by the Summit team and even I missed it, which is a bit of a shame because I think it makes Summit apps more responsive and easier to structure, so I really want to share it with you. But more on that later, first we need to dive into Streamlit 1.12. With Streamlit 1.12 comes a brand new design for the charting method. They have this beautiful blue, red, green Streamlit color theme by default. And they come with new X and Y arguments that you can use to specify the data from columns that you want to plot. Your user can now resize the sidebar by drag and dropping the edge. I think this is useful if you want to see the configuration items that are in the sidebar like a slider or a text input. But it's not easy to guess that it's resizable, so you should definitely add this as a description in your app. I love putting some emojis in my apps to share some emotional concepts with 1.12, your info, success, warning, and error message boxes. Now take an emoji as icon argument to prepare your status message with. Streamlit 1.13. In a world where our attention span is about eight seconds, what was I talking about? You don't want to put a lot of text clutter in your app. This release introduces a new label visibility argument. It takes as value visible by default, which you can change to collapsed if you want to hide the text and the spacing, or hidden if you want to keep the spacing but hide the text altogether. The map method now displays zoom buttons on the top right corner of the map for the few viewers who don't have a scroll wheel on the mouse. Look at this map here. This is where the Titanic sunk. But if you try to visualize the people on the boat with ST data frame, sometimes you'd get small columns and the column headers would be hidden a little bit by the small width. Everything changes with Streamlit 1.13 because it comes with top-notch advanced machine learning <laughs> <laughs> to compute the best column width given the header names and the data in the column. So now the data frame has got the perfect auto width feature. Do you want even more cosmetic changes in your app? Streamlit 1.14. Streamlit branding is slowly being rolled out into all of the widgets. With Streamlit 1.14, buttons now have a brand new red color by adding the type equals primary argument. If you're using multi select in your app, your viewer can usually input all of the options. I mean, who can talk so many languages at the same time, huh? What do you mean the world record is more than 80? We can limit the number of choices a user can make with the max selections argument. If you've got a custom Streamlit deployment behind a reverse proxy that manages the authentication of the user for you and maybe passes the authenticated user to your Streamlit app using the HTTP header, this next feature may be of interest. It is so secret, it's not even deemed experimental. It can disappear at any moment and it will never be promoted inside the Streamlit documentation. And that's why you need to subscribe to my channel if you want to keep track of the Streamlit secrets. There's now an internal function to get back the headers from the WebSocket, enabling you to get some of the HTTP headers in your code and show some custom information depending on the headers. Streamlit 1.15 No more normalizing of NumPy data coming from some OpenAI neural networks somewhere there. ST Audio now supports playing audio data passed in as an MPI array with the keyword sample rate. Labels now accept inline markdown. You can add emojis for emotional supports, uh, bolded, italic or striped text to interactive widget labels and even hyperlinks or code for the static ones like expander or tabs. And there it is, the new caching features. Caching is one of the very core features of Streamlit. Anytime you interact with a widget in your app, it will rerun the script from top to bottom. In this example, the load data function will spend 3 seconds doing uh, I mean, imagine it's actually doing very heavy computation or database processing or I don't know, whatever. And it does that for every rerun from top to bottom. 3 seconds for 8 seconds attention span? What was I talking about? To skip the function execution next time, we can tell Streamlit to put the resulting data frame in the cache by decorating that method with experimental memo. Now at every rerun, Streamlit will check if this function was previously run in the cache and then use this result instead of re-executing it. And that's how we deal with heavy computations in Streamlit. We extract those in 
isolated methods that we then decorate with experimental MIMO. Now let's build a function which displays a preview of the stocks data frame and a line chart of some of its columns which are decided through a Streamlit interactive multi-select. When we change options with multi-select, Streamlit reruns that long preview data frame before displaying anything. Uh, but if you are reselecting the same options as before, you don't want to rerun that long computation before displaying that data frame and line sharp because those are not supposed to change. Starting Streamlit 1.13, you can finally put static Streamlit widgets in decorated caching functions. The data frame and line chart results will be stored in the cache and retrieved whenever I reselect the same method inputs. This means you can bundle computations and Streamlit widgets in the same decorated function. All Streamlit widgets? Hmm. Let's move that multi-select in the preview data frame method. This generates an error because if you change the options in the multi-select, your script reruns from top to bottom. But nothing has changed in the script, so the function is not rerun and we extract the result from the cache. A and this is bad, since the multi-select actually modifies the resulting data frame and line chart, so we want that multi-select to be involved in the computation of the cache key. Starting Streamit 1.15, you can add the experimental allow widgets in the experimental memo and Streamlit will consider any Streamlit interactive widget in the function as a method input. Therefore, if you select an option which was already selected beforehand, Streamlit will detect it and retrieve the correct result from the cache. And this, look at this, this makes it blazingly fast. I personally think that's awesome news because you can now bundle entire parts of your Streamlit app into functions that are decorated with experimental MIMO to be saved into cache. Now a caveat I noticed, uh, if you're trying to store huge matplotlib images or plotly chart in cache, this won't actually speed up the re-rendering of the object in the browser. What Streamlit does is it caches the internal representation of the plotly or the matplotlib in the cache and not the actual rendering on the browser. So it's always recomputing the rendering from the internal representation. And that may be slow if you're using this huge plotly chart and you maybe you should make it a bit smaller. Speaking of plotly, if we replace this line chart by a plotly express chart, we get Streamlit 1.16. Plotly, Altair and Vega got the brand new design from line chart, so we now get those beautiful red, blue and green curves. You can color text in Markdown by prefixing the text with the desired color. And well, Streamlit was acquired by Snowflake, so we are beginning to see the fruits of this collaboration. Now you can display Snowpark data frame and PySpark data frames in the ST data frame method. I need coffee. Well, maybe not. It's midnight. But uh, uh, don't hesitate to buy me a coffee with the link in the description below. I'll see you around. Bye.